In Parshat Ekev, where we find ourselves in the middle of the book of Deuteronomy, there are a lot of different topics. One of them we recite often whenever we recite the traditional Birkat Amazon, the grace after meals, as it were. And we say um, in the middle of it, Ve'achalta v'savata uve'rachta et Adonai Elohecha. And you will eat of it, and you will feel satisfied by it, and you will bless God for the land that you have um, you have been given. Now, there's an interesting conversation. This is one of the books that I brought back with me from Israel, bought it in Jerusalem. It's called Pnine Hagra, Gems of the Vilna Gaon. Now, I want to read you a comment that he uh, makes on the verse before that one. The verse before how we'll feel when we eat and we're satisfied and we bless lists certain kinds of food, and these are the species that are special to Israel. Interestingly enough, they don't only grow in Israel, and he points to that as one of the central questions. So let me read a little bit in Hebrew for the flavor of it, and then I'll translate. He says, So a land of wheat and barley and uh, grapes, meaning wine, uteina and figs, pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey. Okay, so these are the seven species. There's a tradition on Tu Bishvat, the holiday, to have these specific uh, species as part of a Seder. So he says, he begins with a conversation about the blessings that you recite when you eat certain food. So he says, Al Pirata Aretz Omer Bore Pri Adama. He's quoting the Mishnah, and he says, Upon the grains and foods that grow out of the ground, you say Bore Pri Adama. But he says, why wouldn't you say Bore Pri Haaretz, who created not the, fr the fruit from the land, right, from the, the earth, but the fruit from the land? Because you say, when you eat bread, Hamoti Lechamin Haaretz, who brings forth bread from the earth. So why Aretz, why Adama? Just a beautiful question, because the blessings have particular language. And he makes the suggestion that certain foods are associated specifically with the land of Israel. They don't only grow there, but he says, and this is a mystical idea, that when fruit blossoms in the land of Israel, fruit blossoms elsewhere in the world too. The idea that the strength that the earth provides in Israel is an indication of how everything else will go everywhere else in the world. Now, you can take that or leave it. It's a mystical idea, not logically based, but there is something to be said about when you are connected with a bounty of sacred land, which of course, in a universal way, is all land. But what I want to point to is the fact that for a Jewish community, for me, as a Jew, being connected to what grows from the land of Israel, wherever I am, is one of the ways of tapping into my own strength. It's a very, very personal way of relating to the land. And just this morning, having just gotten back from Israel, I had an experience of that, and I wanted to share it and connect it here, because I did eat ve'achalta, Visavata, and I did feel deeply nourished and satisfied. Uverachta, and I bless God for this feeling of strength that having something from the land of Israel gave me. When my wife and I were just in Jerusalem, among the places we went is a place called Shuk Cafe. Um, it's product placement, but I'm not getting any kickback for it. So just enjoy the endorsement without feeling any pressure. Um, and if you decide to go, which I hope you do, I hope you enjoy it just because it's wonderful. Um, this is um, the coffee that we brought back. Uh, there's a coffee roaster in uh, Jerusalem called Shuk Cafe, right, in the Shuk in Jerusalem, Machne Yehuda. And I'll just show you that the label itself is written in Hebrew. And even though you can get coffee anywhere, and even though I'm sure I'm sure that people who really know coffee would be able to say, ah, this is why you like this, and maybe you could get it at a local market here and there. Because the coffee was tended in Jerusalem, was roasted there, and because it's described in Hebrew, and because I had an experience in the heart of our people, learning this, smelling it, having it there, sharing it with my wife, standing in this 
beautiful little store. The shook is full of incredible gourmet and salt of the earth places. There's no nothing like the shook anywhere. Even though you could find markets elsewhere, even though you could find coffee elsewhere, there's something about what the Vilna Gaon says about the fruit of the land. Why do you sometimes say Adama, earth, which is the entire earth? And sometimes you say Aretz, which means the land, specifically the land of Israel. Well, in this week's Parsha, we say there are seven species that are special to the land of Israel. Again, the Hebrew verses, Eretz chita usara vegefen uteina verimon eretz zeit shemen utvash. These seven species, again, I'll remind them, remind you what they are, wheat and barley, grapes and fig and pomegranate, olives and honey, the honey meaning from the date. Even though, even though you can grow all of these things elsewhere, there's a different dimension to their existence in your sacred home. Now, people from around the world of different traditions most likely would say, ah, this fruit I bought at a place that is special for me. This talus came from a special place. This hat, these glasses, this coffee, this mug. Sometimes we associate deep feelings with objects that you could really get anywhere. But the power of this food that's now in me having been roasted in Jerusalem, is a different dimension of satisfaction, a different dimension of nourishment. And in fact, it carries me wherever I am. So I want to ask us just to think about that for a moment. Wherever we are, whatever place is precious to you, I'm imagining some of us are talking about Camp Ramah, where um, my family has been part of the, that world for 30 years plus. There's an exquisite thing when you have something that connects to a place. I'll show you something special. I carry it with me. Yossi Abramowitz, who is an incredible environmental leader in Israel, went to the Sinai and he climbed up Mount Sinai with a friend. And it was an environmental gathering. He's been bringing solar energy to all of Africa um, and is transforming the world, literally transforming the world, um, one conversation at a time. So he um, climbed Mount Sinai with other activists, other leaders, and they created tablets, literally made tablets, where they made covenantal language, the commandments that should guide an environmental approach to life. And then they broke the tablets because of everything we've gotten wrong so far. And then he's handing out these broken pieces that they painted together. So even though I wasn't there, he handed me an object that carries the power of the place and the power of the intention. So between this really delicious coffee and this piece of clay, someone could look at it and say, it's just coffee, it's just clay, but it's not. It's holy. These objects have been defined by specific circumstances. And because of that, the world is blessed. So again, the verse, Eretz chitau sarav agefen uteina verimon Eretz zeit shemen utvash. You can get wheat all over the world. You can get barley all over the world, and grapes, and figs, and pomegranates, and olive, and honey from dates. But it's different. Not only because it's local, because my heart is local to the origin of this food. And it gives me strength to be connected to it. May we be blessed, friends, to feel strong, to feel nourished, and then to remember to speak gratitude because of the gifts of those things that we're blessed to have. Here we go.
See you tomorrow, friends. Take care.